Okay, welcome to episode six of the Sean McGuinness podcast. Thanks for all the feedback so far, the likes and shares and all the comments. I really appreciate it. Now today, I'm excited to talk about the topic we are going to discuss because it's kind of congruent with the crazy situation at the moment. Now, no doubt, scrolling through social media, Facebook, Instagram, and today's world, you're going to see lots of stuff about uh, to get through this situation, we need to have a strong mindset. All right, and we always see this in business. You go on these entrepreneurial Instagram pages, and you go to, to to be rich and to be successful. You need to have a strong mindset. If we go on a fitness page, then we'll all see this to to lose fat and to gain muscle and get fit. You need to have a strong mindset, and it's usually some juiced up steroid head bodybuilder in the back that sells protein for a living, talking about how we need to have a good mindset and be, to be successful. Now, then you might say, okay, well, what is a good mindset? Because otherwise, you're just throwing these useless words and useless advice around. What is a good mindset? And secondly, how do I get one? Now, in today's podcast, we're just going to break down quickly a little bit of uh, certain aspects around psychology, around mindset, that will hopefully help you with your behavior change and with losing fat. Because again, all always comes back to fat loss is calories in, calories out. But to manipulate that equation... And to be able to carry that out long term, you need to have properly ingrained habits and behaviors that you can sustain forever. Okay, because if I get someone in front of me who is overweight, out of shape, they have certain habits and behaviors about that are congruent with them being in the situation I am, causing them to be overweight, causing them to have health problems and other myriad of other factors. Now, not only do they have certain habits and behaviors congruent with being out of shape, but they also may have a lot of beliefs and a lot of schemas and a lot of uh, an identity tied in with that as well. Now, the reason why we'll look at psychology is because, yes, you can change someone's habits and behaviors just with the approaches I talk about in that, but, but also sometimes you are actually being held back from carrying those habits and behaviors out, especially long enough, because you have certain limiting beliefs and limiting identities, limits and mindset. Let me give you an example. That person sitting in front of me has certain habits and beliefs, but they may also have a certain identity tied with them being overweight. For example, a common one is, "I've, uh, I've always been overweight, or I'm naturally lazy, or I'm just not a gym person, or my whole family's overweight, so um, that's just me. Um, and obviously, the longer someone has been like that, the stronger it's going to be, especially if it's starting in childhood, because a lot of our belief systems are formed when we're a child. And then we develop those rose tinted glasses, and that guides us through the world. So obviously, the longer it's been happening, the stronger these are going to be. So I'm going to point them out, and hopefully you may identify them or go, ah, do you know what, actually, this is the word that I think like that. Because all this stuff is done, um, it's done subconsciously, so we don't even know we're doing it, crazy enough. Okay, um, I'm not a gym person, I'm naturally overweight, all this kind of stuff. This is also, just as a side note, what I think of it. I also work with um, a great physio, Nigel Morgan, and he always talks about this in terms of people having injuries, in the fact that He'll fix them. A lot of them, they actually subconsciously don't want to be fixed because their identity is tied with that injury. Um, and they may be subconsciously wanting to be injured because that's all they talk about. Their friends, they want sympathy. They want to fall into that victim victim mentality. Okay? If we look at mentalities, a common one in fat loss is that black and white, all or nothing mentality. Okay? Where people are in, they just want perfection. Okay, and this could be great in other aspects of your life, but obviously in terms of fat loss, it may be holding you back massively because in terms of fat loss, we want to just be consistently average for a long period of time. You don't need perfection. If we're looking at perfection, we actually want we want to be able to fit foods we enjoy into a plan and not think of them in kind of good and bad terms per se because if we do that and then we eat a quote-unquote bad food, that slips us up and we go, fuck it, I'm going to start again next week. Okay, so a little background in that as well. 
Now, in the same way we have our identity, we have these different mentalities also tied in with a kind of belief system, okay? Because again, the stronger belief is that will naturally form an identity after a core belief. We have different beliefs, and in terms of fat loss and health, you may have certain limiting beliefs that are actually holding you back from trying to carry out the behaviors you should be doing. What are some common ones? Well, you may say, um, um, I've tried to lose weight loads of times before. It just hasn't worked for me. That's a belief you may have. You may have the belief that losing weight is very hard. You may have dieting is too hard. You may just have, I'm getting older. You know, it's very hard to lose weight as you get older. I'm not the type of person that goes to the gym. I'm not really a gym person. Um, I'm not. I'm not a healthy person not naturally a healthy person i like food too much i like drinking too much okay um and just like our identity if if we have a belief about something um that belief could be a limiting belief where it's stopping you from carrying out these habits and behaviors now if we look at breaking these beliefs breaking this belief system we first want to be aware of it okay me just pointing you out you may may push you to start to think about other beliefs you may have about everything in general it doesn't have to be fat loss i think we think about 60 to eighty thousand thoughts on a daily basis there's going to be a lot of stuff that beliefs that aren't true that are holding you back and kind of other aspects of your life as well so you first is awareness okay a lot of people will encourage kind of their clients to write all these beliefs down especially the ones are at the gym the ones you're trying to target second is to realize that belief system is a normal part of being a human being and a lot of it you're not in control over because they're formed when you're very young the form when your brain's like a sponge like i said the form in relation to teachers your family all these aspects that you are just too young to do and about you may have been you may have some unfortunate look when you're younger no worries cool it just means you have to work a bit harder that's the cards you dealt with when you're older otherwise your future may be based on the past which is a kind of a crazy thing to think about if you do not put on a new pair of rose tinted glasses um and it could be caused by culture society even in even in ireland where um what is a common belief where you might think not even fat loss but we may ha- we do have the kind of belief system whether it's talked about or not that men don't really show emotion or it's kind of a it's a kind of we thing for men to cry um and so on and so on. Not only in Ireland, but other places. But yeah, in Ireland, they're kind of referred to... Men are referred to a bit emotionally unintelligent. A bit emotionally retarded. Um, it may also be the reason that we have the highest rate of drinking culture in the world. <laughs> Something to think about as well also. Okay, so we, we've identified it. We've normalized it. And next, what we want to do is to challenge that belief. So you want to say, you want to write it down. And again, you may need to work with a psychologist on this. I'm just doing this purely for your awareness only, clinical psychologist or therapist, whatever it is. So to challenge a belief, you're right, you're, you have your self-limiting beliefs out on paper. You'll take one at a time. And then you'll say, okay, is this true? Okay, you may say, yes. Let's, let's say, for example, uh, what one do we use? I'm not a gym person. Or it, let, let, no, let's say it's difficult to lose weight. That's a belief you have. It's difficult to lose weight. Let's write that on paper. Is this true? Yes. Okay, what's the evidence for that? Well, I've tried many times before. Okay? Um, and then you may challenge that again. And say, well... Or you may have me challenge it or someone else challenge it. And you may say, well... Uh, did you do it the right way? Oh, no. What? Well, well, I do, I do a lot of yo-yo diet and a crash diet and I went to all these people who weren't that qualified okay then you begin to challenge that statement and reframe that in your head and say well weight loss is hard if you don't do it the right way or if you do it the right if you crash diet or yo-yo diet or whatever it is and you'll do that with all your your limiting beliefs okay the same way someone may have the belief i'm an unhealthy person yeah in this moment you are an unhealthy person but it doesn't mean we can't get you to the stage where you'll be a healthy person used to be a fucking small person as well but now you're growing up so it, it because you hold a belief doesn't mean we can't start to go out of that and even if we look at 
a popular book is um, Carol Dweck's, where she talks about fixed versus growth mindset. Okay, and we we kind of want the mindset that again we can change, we're in control of change and stuff. What were our beliefs and our actions? They're not fixed in time. We we have the ability, we have the control to change them. Okay, and on the topic of beliefs and mindset, like we were talking about to start with the entrepreneurial. <laughs> I'm going to picture Richard Branson and saying you need to have a good mindset. Well, mindset may just be breaking limiting beliefs that you have that are stopping you from getting to a certain place. So, for example, if we kind of look at business and look at making money, you may have you may have grown up in a society or family that um, ingrained the belief system that money is the root of all evil or that rich people are stigmatized a certain way or um, save it make sure you save every penny and these beliefs for example if you look at save every penny it may be stopping you from investing money and making more money or whatever it is if you look at people um if we look at relationships and love people may hold the belief that there's no one out there for me i'm always going to be alone and by simply having that belief that is stopping you from going out and meeting everyone, fucking ironically, and getting a partner, okay, so again, your beliefs, actions, they feed into each other, so a certain belief will stop you engaging in a certain action, and getting you to where you want to be, now, lastly, let's have a look at excuses, just going back onto these social uh, media pages around fitness and fat loss, you're always going to see the juiced up bodybuilder, who sells protein for a living with a quote on the front saying no excuses if you want to lose fat you can't have any fucking excuses no fucking excuses merely and it's why people coaches who may come from this background of bodybuilding they have a hard time dealing with people in the general pop um because they have an identity around the gym and eat in a certain way and a lot of time they can't get their head around how someone else won't like the gym or doesn't like training the legs and hamstrings and quads and glutes for four hours a day they can't get around so they find it hard to coach these people now excuses are interesting the the psychological name for excuses is cognitive dissonance okay and why do we make excuses other than the obvious well someone may have the identity or opinion or belief of themselves that for example they're a motivated and successful person Okay, they may be successful in other fields, whether that's being a parent, whether that's in business, whatever. There's loads of different ways to measure success. Now, if someone is trying to lose fat and they don't want to go to the gym, well, now that person has a belief that is not congruent with the behavior they're going to carry out. So they, they believe about themselves that they're motivated and successful, yet they're getting a bit lazy to go to the gym, okay? So the two don't match. Your brain has a little bit of a dilemma. So what does your brain do? Well, it justifies the action. So it's now still congruent with the belief you hold about themselves. So if you believe you're motivated and successful, you're a bit lazy, go to the gym. What are you going to do? Are you going to say, oh, well, you know what? I've had a long day. I deserve a day off or I'll go to the the gym tomorrow when I'm fresh. When I, I didn't have a good sleep today. I missed lunch you'll use justification as a way to to keep your identity congruent with your actions okay that's why people do it we need to understand this bias thinking again like the other stuff we've talked about uh, because if you're trying to lose fat you need to understand why we make decisions this is why marketers people marketers who understand psychology understand how we're very irrational creatures and then they go and they make lots of money off us they understood that when the economy was going down, that humans naturally have an emotional attachment to cash money. And what did they fucking do? They brought out credit cards. Wa-bam. Everyone got on the credit card there. They made lots of money. They kept their jobs. Now, obviously, st- uh, sometimes our rational and biased thinking served us well because we obviously evolved with it. It could, in evolutionary terms, things that served us well back then, the difference between life and death may not serve us well now. What we do, we need to understand it and we can then catch ourselves doing it. So, for example, when we're going to make an excuse about not going to the gym, we'll say, no, actually, I remember Sean talked about cognitive dissonance on the podcast and I'm going to make sure I don't fall into that biased way of thinking. 
So I'm going to go to the gym even if I don't feel like it. Okay, and that could, and these are all coping strategies and very, very important to know again for long term sustainable change. Okay, so we've covered a bit there, <laughs> and obviously, in future podcasts, we can go in a bit more in depth into each one and go over a little bit more. Again, if you're interested, do your own research, go see psychologists, go mentor psychologists, whatever you need to do. But I, I'm supposed if we go back to what we first questioned and said, what the fuck is mindset? Well, it's obviously a broad topic, but one big important part of mindset will be eliminating certain beliefs and certain identities that you hold about yourself that are actually preventing you from carrying out the habits and behaviors you need to be to become successful in that field, whether it's fat loss, whether it's relationships, whether it's business, etc. Okay, and just on the topic of identity, one thing I did forget to mention at the start is you may have a certain identity about yourself, but it actually could be... Um, strongly reinforced by the people around you, your family, your friends. And a lot of time, if you try to break your own identity, well, your friends and people who may know you a certain way, they may be actually pulling you into line and stopping you breaking that. Um, so, for example, if you start to try to lose fat, you go, well, you've tried that so many different times before. Like you, you, You're naturally the fat person. not going to say to you if they mean, but they will start to do that subconsciously. The same way if someone is trying to get away from the party lifestyle, the friends are naturally going to peer pressure them back into the identity, how they know them or how they want to be. So if you look at the people around you who have a strong influence on that, family, friends, work colleagues, spouses, whatever it is, you need to make sure to get them on board to explain the change you're trying to do and explain the new identity you're trying to form. And if they're not on board with that, well, they need to get rid of them. If they're either hindering you or helping you, one or the other. So we need to look at all these limiting self-beliefs. We need to write them down. We need to begin to challenge them on a daily basis. Or we we have, again, 60 to 80,000 thoughts per day. So there's a lot of time in there where you're going to have where these belief systems are going to turn up. But the same way with our normal habits, the same way in the gym, it requires repetition. And we really need to challenge them repetitively however you say that um, to be able to do it long term okay so that's just to give you a kind of general basis on everything and hopefully ask some questions that no one's ever asked before and hopefully opens up some new doors that can help you with your journey again fat loss comes down to so many different things that are not openly and often talked about So if we start to put together all the different aspects of psychology and behavior psychology, social psychology, and then we look at nutrition and we look at training and we try to get a nice little mix of all, that is, that's the goal. That's the goal with someone. Okay. And hopefully I'll bring you on that journey as we go. Not that I know all the answers, but I'll try to teach you what has been successful for me and my clients so far. There you go. Episode six done. Um, feedback welcome I replied to all the messages so make sure to DM me go always go to interact with everyone so there you go much love stay safe and I'll talk to you all in the next episode